What is going on everybody? It's Chris from Lion Punch Forge and I know what you're thinking. It's been a while. What have you been doing? Well, I've been making cabs. I've been taking care of my sick little kitty who is now home from the hospital. Thank you everyone who uh, reached out on social media and said, hey, we're thinking about you. I really appreciate it. So today we're going to do a little introductory we're going to use some tools and we're gonna finish up Rough to Riches. So in the last Rough to Riches video, you saw me make this cab. Fun, we'll get a better close up here in a minute. And we're gonna be turning that into a necklace today. Very simple necklace. We're not gonna go hog wild, but we are gonna use the Haymaker Saw, the Lion's Claw Gold, the OPFG adapter. Lion Punch Forge Engraving Adapter. We'll use that. And then I'd also, may not use it in part of the project, but I'd like to introduce something near and dear to my heart. This fella. Hey. How you doing? This is the Pepe tool. Hang on, I got that. I was kidding, it's not that hard. <laughs> Click! Unscrew the bottom here, and my little head pops out, and I got myself a handy dandy ring clamp. This handy dandy ring clamp has a lot of clamping force for those difficult work-holding positions. And it's iconic looking. Can't quite place it, but this guy right here, new on the market, it's a reintroduction of the ring clamp that was previously on the market, this time all made in the USA. This little guy right here, fits in your hand and hold stuff so I'll be doing a future video on this but first I wanted to at least introduce it show it and let you know that this pink fella is gonna be living on my desk next to Tom there so let's get started on this if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe right down in the bottom there there's a little red 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 there's a little red subscribe button, click that. There's a little bell too. So if you like my videos, and let me go ahead and earn that subscription first. So take a look. If you think I earn it, click subscribe. And uh, that little bell there, that's gonna give you a notification when I make a new video. If you looking for Lion's Claw Gold, the affiliate link to Pepe Tools for Haymaker Saw, or anything else, Go to LionPunchForge.com, go to Tools, and then click Buy Some Pepe Tools. You'll be able to find this guy, Lion's Claw Golds, now being sold on Pepe Tools' website as well as mine, and the Haymaker. But I don't want to forget the original. The original, there it is. Line Punch Forge Engraving Adapter. Check out these guys too. We'll show you later on. So, we're not going to make this super long. We're going to make a very simple necklace using the cabochon that I cut and eh, see how it goes. All right, so we have our cabochon. We're gonna go ahead and work out a design for that. And a lot of the time when I'm trying to figure out a design for a cabochon, I will take the lapidary cabochon templates, like these guys, and kind of lay out maybe what I want it to look like. I really like the way this looks right now. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a marker 
I'll go ahead and draw this out. Move this away. Put our cab in there. And then work on what this is going to look like in place. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. I'm going to make our plate slightly larger because I need to make room for the bezel around. And then I'm thinking about like a bunny ear type bail. Just like that. So, and then what I'll probably end up doing is just engraving little marks all the way around and calling it good. So, something very simple. That's what we're gonna do. So, let's, uh, let's get started. And in order to do that, we're gonna need metal, bezel, half round. All right, we're going to draw out our template on our metal. And I'm going to cut that out in a minute, figure out how much bezel strip we need. So in order to do that, I use a little tiny scribe. I'm going to take just a little bit of this wire out and then I'm just gonna wrap this around my stone. Typically when I do this, I do not want a joint on the bottom or the top or directly on the sides. I will stick the joint somewhere right there, right in the middle of one of the curvatures. All right, so I have kind of a spring set here, just like that. I do see a little bit of light through there so I'm going to crimp it down just a little bit, kind of stretch that metal out. And then I will be able to solder those together. And we'll do that in just a minute. I'm going to take a little file though and I'm going to flat that off. And do the same thing on this side. So I have a safe edge on my file here. Here's my file, safe edge, safe edge, safe edge. Safe edge is a fancy way of saying there's no teeth on it. So I don't have to worry about it scratching another part of my work. I have a couple safe edge files that I keep around and really, really like. So now that we got that, we're gonna go ahead and cut out our plate and hey, let's worry about making a bale before we cut out our plate because I have to reposition the camera anyway. So I have my wire. I'm gonna do a bunny ear bale. If you're using these type of pliers, bale making pliers, I will put the metal right in the center of the circumference and then just start twisting it and then move move your hand, move the wire, so you get a nice even twist. And since I'm making a bunny ear bale, I want to wrap this around twice. Until those two ends meet. See how we're here and we're here. We're gonna go ahead and cut that. Right about there. So I'll take my scribe. I'll take this out and drop my scribe. Okay, now that I have this, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push one of these ends under, push one of these ends over, separate out 
the two ears kind of like this and what I'm going to do is solder those together and then I will make a cut once they're soldered together so that I can have an overlapping veil. See those two ends now touching. What I want to do is solder that together so that all this stuff is nice and tight and then I can saw the bail out to slip onto my metal. So we'll do that in a minute but we need to use the haymaker to saw this stuff out and I think we should do that now. So let me set up my bench pin and we will play. All right. Let's saw this out, but first, lube. We're going to do everything with our hard soldering first. So I'm going to do my bezel and I'm going to do my bail because I'm going to be soldering both of those onto the plate after I make these. So I want to try and use a solder that uh, won't melt when I use medium solder to solder the bezel onto the back plate. So first I'm going to go ahead and get the bail set up and I'm going to use the Lion's Claw Gold for that. I'm going to put it on top. I'm going to add some flux, a little squeeze bottle here. I'm going to add some flux to the bail, a little squeeze bottle. It's got a little leaky squeeze bottle. Oh, that's okay. Sometimes that happens. But we got flux. Good. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut some pieces of hard solder. Rest those on my block so I can work with them. Grab a pair of tweezers. I like a sharp pointed tweezer for this kind of stuff and I got a piece of solder stuck in there so we'll grab him out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and place my solder now. And I'm going to place it right underneath the joint on the bezel. And then I'm going to place it right on top of this joint for the bail. That should work. All 
All right. Just to make sure I got flux on the solder. I'm going to add a little bit more here, a little bit more here. And then I'm going to go ahead and fire up my torch. And we're going to solder this guy if I can find my striker. I always lose my striker. It's right here somewhere. Hmm. Where did it go? Found it. A low flame to begin with. I just want to dry the solder out. I mean flux, dry the flux out. Okay, I did not like the way the bale turned out mostly because it, uh, it broke. So, we're gonna do that over. And I wanna make sure I show you that because well, I make mistakes sometimes, and I know that everyone else does too, but I want to make sure that I show them on camera when I do. So, here I am fixing my mistake. We got some flux, grab some solder. There we go. All right, so everything kind of put together is going to kind of look like that. So what I have done is I've taken my bezel on some sandpaper over here. Let's take this guy away. And I flattened out the bottom just kind of using a figure eight. Find the side. I'm going to like this side. Now my plate is a little bit bowed. I'm kind of going to run rawhide mallet. So I'm going to need to thank Sandy Sturgeon for making me a tiny stamp with my line in it. See if I can get this arranged right. I'm going to put it right down here. However you can see it. A little tiny lion touch mark. And then we'll turn this over. Now, before we do that, we want to talk a little bit about our bale. So our bale is gonna need to be cut down the center.
<laughs> and try not to cut yourself, because I just did. Band-Aid. All right. I have a long wire kind of squeezed together as a clamp and the Lion's Claw Gold upside down so that it acts as kind of a side clamp to hold that in place while I solder my bail. Now, if you remember when we soldered the bail together, it was with hard solder, so I want to make sure that I use medium solder now. show you how I have this set up. I have my Lion's Claw Gold on a block to make it even with, this is a little graphite block, to make it even with my charcoal. Below the bezel I have a piece of titanium strip that I bent to raise the bezel plate off and then I have the Lion's Claw Gold with a titanium plate just resting, or a uh, wire, just resting down on that. And then on this back side, I have my bale off the block and out of the way. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a flux in there. I'm gonna heat the flux up and then I'm gonna place my solder after the flux uh, dries out. And then I can go back over the torch and just melt that solder exactly where I wanna go. So I'm gonna probably place one, two, three, four, five, six little pieces of solder on the inside of that bezel so that it flows down and out. So I do not necessarily want a lot of cleanup on the outside of the bezel. The inside is fine because that's where my stone's gonna go and the stone is not opaque. So should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and readjust my camera add some flux, do my solder, and then heat this bad boy up. pickle. I did a little bit of polishing on this just to kind of get some rough spots out, kind of blend everything in. And next I'm going to use the Lion Punch Forge engraving adapter to put lines like sun rays in the side here to kind of add a little bit of texture to that. And while I'm doing that I'm going to share with you one of my engraving secrets. So that secret itself is hot glue. This isn't quite hot enough yet, but ow. 
Eh, never mind. Um, what we're going to be doing is taking our engraving ball and I'm going to be placing hot glue on my jaws, placing my pendant on top, and then pressing it down and letting it set. That's going to give me a nice solid platform that's easy to take off for my engraving. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for this guy to warm up a little bit. It looks like we're there. Press that down, turn and glue gun off, and should have a nice solid place to engrave. So I'm going to try and move this around, you guys can see. The last part of this is going to be setting the stone and giving it a patina. It's a fun word to say. Patina. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set around and just slowly kind of get that positioned right where I want it. And then I'm 
going to start really adding the pressure. I'm going to use this little guy, kind of get in here and get the small areas. And just burnish that over. Now we're going to add a little bit of liver of sulfur patina in a special way that allows for kind of a rainbow effect. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right, I've got a little thing of water over here and some liver of sulfur gel. I'm gonna open this up a little bit so I can get a paintbrush kind of in there. Uh, add a little bit of water. Get a little bit of liver of sulfur, and I'm going to paint this where I want it. There we go, and I'll go ahead and wash this off. Let's put the liver sulfur away. And we're just going to do a little bit of soap and water to rinse it down. So I'll be back and show you the finished product. 